So, you've removed your fingerprint necklace from the oven, it's completely cooled down and you're certain that it's completely dry. So now it's time to tidy up the rough edges and any rough surfaces to make sure that it's ready to be fired. We're going to gradually polish the surface of the necklace until it looks super, super smooth. To do this, I'm going to use these sanding pads. Now these go from 180 grit to 220 grit to 280. And I bought them in a pack like this and they're absolutely fantastic for polishing silver clay. But you can use normal wet and dry sandpaper that you can buy from any regular DIY store. The only thing to bear in mind if you're using wet and dry sandpaper instead of the sanding pads is that the grits for wet and dry sandpaper are often very, very different to the grits for the sanding pads themselves. So if you're going to use sandpaper, you'll need to start with something around 800 grit, which is actually quite fine. And you need to move down to ultra fine, something like 1200 grit or even 2500 grit, which is quite specialist. So you might have to find that online or in an automotive store. If you can possibly get your hands on them, these 3M polishing papers are absolutely fantastic because these things go from 400 grit all the way up to 8,000 grit and they have no sharp edges which could nick or damage your clay in any way. So these are absolutely amazing for achieving a beautiful mirror finish on silver clay jewellery. Don't ever, ever be tempted to miss out a grade or a step. It's never, ever worth it. You will always be able to see fine hairline scratches if you do and you'll never ever get that lovely mirror finish. So place your Teflon sheets down on your flat work surface and we're gonna sand your silver clay necklace over the top of the Teflon sheet to make sure we catch all of the precious silver clay filings and sandings. Now, the sanding and filings are actually really valuable and you can save them. And the reason we do that is that we can pop them into a little jar, like this kilner jar here, which is completely airtight. And we can mix them with a little bit of water. And then we can use that to make filler, like polyfiller, which can be used to fill in little cracks or pits that might, you might discover in the surface of your clay. So they're actually really, really useful and all worth, always worth keeping hold of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two millimetre drill bit and I'm going to very, very carefully, think hardly daring to breathe carefully, I'm going to twist it into the hole that I made earlier with my metal clay needle tool and the drill bits before. The reason I need to do this is to make sure that the hole is completely tidied up and it's big enough to add the little silver jump ring later. So ever so gently, I'm going to pop it into the hole and twist just to make sure that there's no little pieces of clay sticking out anywhere that are going to end up making the hole smaller. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to twist again and do exactly the same thing. So now I know that the hole is neat and tidy and it's definitely going to be big enough. I'm now going to sand over all the edges and the sides of the necklace, moving from my most abrasive sanding pad, which is the 180, all the way down to the 280. Then I'm going to move on to my 3M polishing papers because I know that these will guarantee I get a really beautiful mirror finish on my finished fingerprint necklace. When you're using the um, sanding pads, always cut little pieces off rather than using the whole sheet. The only thing that you will notice is that the grit or the grade of the sanding pad is only written in a few places on the back of the pad. So if you cut a little piece off like this, you're not going to know what it is unless you write on the back with a sharpie or a marker. So when you cut a little piece off, just write on the back what it is and then you can, you'll know what it is when you go back to it later. I'm going to very, very carefully take my fingerprint necklace and I'm going to sand over the top of my Teflon sheet and I can feel with my finger as it gradually gets smoother. I'm going to do the front of the necklace, being very careful to cover up the fingerprint itself so I can work around the edges. And if you turn over on the back, you will often see that the back has small sections that are indented or higher and lower than others. As you move over with the sanding pad, you'll be able to see these small areas that are higher and lower disappearing as you make it completely flat. 
always sanding over the sheet to catch the filings. Now you can use the edge of your sanding pad or you can cut off small pieces of sandpaper and fold them into a little V shape. And this means you can reach into any tiny little crevices like this central V part of the heart that can be pretty difficult to get into otherwise. You can do it with the V-shaped sandpaper like that, or you can do it with the edge of your sanding pad. And I'm gonna move down all of these different grades until it's completely smooth you'll see that the clay starts to take on quite a shiny appearance as you get towards the last few grades of sanding papers the only problem with using wet and dry sandpaper as opposed to using these sanding pads is that it can be quite easy to nick the clay with sandpaper because it's quite rigid and it has these quite sharp edges so if you're going to use sandpaper you just need to make sure you're super super careful nicks in the edge of your necklace aren't the end of the world in this, at this dry clay stage, they are completely repairable, but they are an avoidable nuisance. It is one of the reasons why a lot of people choose to use these sanding pads or the softer 3M polishing papers over the sandpaper because they have these lovely soft backs and you're less likely to cause any damage. <laughs> 